no one really cares that you know how to start a spreadsheet. No one really cares that you type 75 words per minute. I think what employers really cared about is like, what are your unique skills that are very unique to you despite whatever job you're applying to. And I really thought about that. And at the time, I had been working on a lot of like magazines and newspapers. Again, like I wanted to be a journalist, so I really got my feet wet and like laying out pages that were going to be printed. And I had some familiarity with like the Adobe Suite and InDesign and Photoshop. So I started to apply to design jobs out of desperation. It wasn't really because like I wanted to be a graphic designer or creative director. I just really needed a job. So, and they, those were kind of the only positions that I think would really give me a chance. So in 2013, 2014, I started a design internship and for a pyramid scheme that didn't last very long. And, and then that internship turned into another job. And then that job turned into what would eventually be my graphic design business, um, which I called Up and Away Creative Studio. And I was designing a lot of really cool stuff. Um, my area of expertise was branding and UI UX, which is just a fancy word for like web design and like really like the front end of websites that the users are constantly engaging with. And I loved it. I think that there was a, it was such a special experience to like work with a client who had this vision, and it was your job to make it come true. And I had a lot of, I got a lot of really great experience in brand development and really figuring out how can I create a brand identity that customers fall in love with? Because I think that's really the trick. It's not really about the colors and the fonts and the cool vectors. It's really about how well is this story going to connect with a bigger audience? And I really loved that kind of like romantic aspect of branding. And so that was really me in 2014. And basically up until 2016, but then I became a bruja, and um, I really, thanks girl. Um, <laughs> I, during this time, I had a lot of, I was working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I was working also in a lot of creative spaces for a lot of different creative agencies that were really white. And I think I really felt kind of alone in a lot of these creative environments. I think back in 2014, conversations about diversity and inclusion were just not happening. I think they're just kind of starting now. So back then, I think it was really hard to be creative and to just work in like a professional environment where I didn't feel seen. So, um, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> so then, um, <laughs> So what ended up happening is I, I think I, I had this like really, had a big void. I had a big void in my professional career. I think that as a designer I felt really fulfilled, but I think I really lacked this community and I definitely was not finding it at work or with my clients. So I remember one day I was on Instagram and I saw this post for a Chicana feminist reading group. And I was like, yes, these are my people. So many intersections, I love it. And um, I got really close to this reading group and I love that I was able to have a dialogue about culture in such a contemporary way with so many young people really unpacking what it means to be multicultural, what it means to be Latinx, what it means to be American, what it means to be queer. And I don't think I had ever been in an environment where there was so much dialogue that just like spoke to me on such a personal level. And during this time, um, I'm working with this reading group, and we're going to all the protests, and we have a lot to fight for. And I noticed that I really started um, being drawn to like images of La Virgen de Guadalupe. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that I was like really trying to reconcile the in-betweenness that is being Mexican-American for me. And I think that being a part of this reading group really made me understand kind of like the dichotomy and like the constant inner conflict that it is to be of two different cultures. You know, I think in our community, we're always hearing like, ni de aquí, ni de allá. And I think as a 21, 22 year old, who's like really building herself in a career that's very white dominant, I think that really spoke to me. And it, again, like I still just like was unpacking so much. And 
And I think the reason why I was so attracted to like this image of La Virgen de Guadalupe was because I think this image is also like this in-betweenness, right? Like she's indigenous, but she's also kind of like this puppet for like the Spanish European government. And she also has like all these indigenous features, but also very European. Um, she's of Mexico, but she's also global. So I think just like this in-betweenness, this liminalness of La Virgen de Guadalupe really spoke to me. And I just kind of started adorning my life with more images of La Virgen. And next, I, uh, when I was looking for photos for this slideshow, I found this Facebook post. I'm going to quit my full-time job to design greeting cards, doing big things. I was being sarcastic, but this actually kind of ended up happening. And, and in 2015, I, so going back to me being really dissatisfied at work, um, I remember one time I was asked to create this greeting, so I used to work for a really well-known greeting card company, and they, I was asked to create a greeting card with a chihuahua and a sombrero, and that was kind of the breaking point. Um, I just could not, and I was really trying to find a way to channel like my culture, but also my interest in design. So I had this idea for a Latinx greeting card company. And so this is really the first iteration of what Hija de Madre was. And I don't talk about this a lot because it's so embarrassing. But basically I was like, okay, I'm gonna start a greeting card company. First thing, headshots. Um, disregard my flower crown. Okay, it was 2015, don't judge me. And I came up with a logo and like one greeting card inspired by La Sonora Dinamita. I don't know, like Valentine's Day edition. I don't know. I didn't really think it through. But I think what ended up happening, obviously this didn't end up happening. And I think what it was is that one, I didn't really think it through. And like what a lot of um, early stage or like idea stage entrepreneurs, what ended up happening is like I had no roadmap. And I think that was the problem is like I had this idea, but there were no actionable steps. I just, <laughs> I set a launch date and I mean, that didn't really help, but I just didn't think of step one and step two and step three. I got headshots first. That was probably a red flag. And, <laughs> and I kind of forgot about this, to be honest. Um, I kind of only came up with a few designs, and then I wasn't really serious about it um, because I decided to move to Mexico City. 2015 was crazy, y'all. And I... Going back to this idea of like me unpacking, me trying to figure out what it means to be Chica, and me really reconciling these two identities, I just felt like this really cheesy yearning for this eat, pray, love story of me moving to Mexico City. And so in October, that's what I did. Um, at that time, I was working a lot from home, so I wasn't really working on site anymore. I had a lot of flexibility, so I had that privilege. And so I ended up staying in Mexico for like six months, um, and it was honestly like the best thing that's ever happened to me. I was really broke, but I was eating really good, and it was so fun. And I was living my best Instagram Pinterest life. And so then the second iteration of Because of Now That I Started, and, um, so again, the greeting card thing didn't work out, and I, so I was like, okay, vlog. So I was traveling, I had the content, so I told myself, like, what a great outlet to really document all of this. And so I started a blog, which was, again, pretty short-lived, but it was just a really great way, I think, for me to kind of, like, verbalize my experiences and then also kind of, like, document this unpacking and this like really cheesy like finding yourself that was going on. But when I came back to LA in 2016, um, I wasn't, obviously I wasn't really blogging anymore because I wasn't traveling and there was like no cool content. So what ended up happening is I really started focusing more on my graphic design career. I was a Virgo, I am a Virgo, so I was like tripping out because like there's no work, there's no clients. I was really, feeling stressed out about my career, kind of like plateauing while I was in Mexico. So when I came back to LA, I really like took that seriously. And this is when the third iteration of Because the Madre started. 
um, I had just gotten paid, and I had this idea, or actually no, I had this idea for this jacket, which was my old Levi's jacket with a sequin embellishment of La Virgen de Guadalupe. And mind you, I was just making this jacket for myself. I had no plans of like turning this into a business. But the second that I put that jacket on, I just felt so complete. Like I just felt like this is the perfect composite of who I am. In fashion, there's nothing more American than denim. And in Mexican culture, Mexican history, there's nothing more Mexican than La Virgen de Guadalupe. So for me, it was just like the perfect marriage of my two worlds. And I just knew that like I was kind of a walking case study of what would eventually be my my market. And so I just knew that if I felt this connected to this jacket, like I knew so many other like-minded Latinx women, so many Latinas, so many daughters of immigrants could kind of feel the same way. And so I got paid. I used that disposable income to buy 30 jackets. And I begged my friends to take photos for me. That's Jessica Salgado. And we took photos and I made an Instagram and that was really it. Um, I obviously didn't think this was going to become what it is now, but I think that now <laughs> it's just become something completely different. I think the first, every time I started Hija de Madre blog or stationery, it was really about where I was in my life, and it's so crazy how like now it's not really about me anymore, it's more about where my customers are in their lives, and I think that the political climate especially made it possible for me to start a business like this with this type of success because there was just there was a need for this type of safe safe space on the internet as well as an opportunity for women to kind of like purchase these tools that make them feel empowered in their workplaces and their schools and their communities you know Hija de Madre isn't just Boyle Heights it's Boise Idaho and I think that there's Latinas everywhere who want this sense of belonging and want this representation and I think we're really happy to give that to them. Um, back to today's theme of inclusive, I think that's something that we're always trying to do is how can we make space for everybody. I can't represent every culture. My experience is very narrow and have a lot of privilege, but I think we can definitely lend our platform for so many different Latinx identities that rarely get represented or seen. And I think that's really what Hija de Madre is, is kind of like rewriting the narrative of what Latinx looks like now. And um, yeah, so I don't know what it is about jackets, but our customers love them, I love them, and we're always trying to come up with new designs and just new products that make them feel so seen. Um, these are just a couple of our jacket designs. And now what we've really been focusing on is kind of where Latinas are going. So last year I really honed in on the numbers. So like Latinas are such a huge US buying power. Latinas are leading um, self-employment growth. They're starting businesses faster than any other ethnic group in America. Um, but at the same time, we make 54 cents an hour, I mean 54 cents to the dollar compared to white men. So I think that Despite the fact that we're leading so much economic growth, we're not getting paid what we need to be getting paid. And so, um, and with that being said, I think I really wanted to hone in on this like make hefa moves movement and really kind of pioneer something that Latinas could feel pioneer a movement, but also products that make them feel empowered to start their own business. I think it's really my job now to kind of pass on these torches and to just kind of continue to empower my community um, despite all the bullshit and whoever the fuck is in the fucking White House. But um, yeah, I think that that's where I'm at right now. That's where we're taking Yeeha the Mother. As much as we're known for our jackets and our Regency that jacket, I think what I want us to, what I want the world to remember Yeeha the Mother as is really just empowering our community. And we really are equal parts community and culture. And, oh yeah, this is a number that I'm like super, that gets me so emotional, but like by 2060, Latinas are gonna make up 30% of the US population. So um, with that being said, I think it's really important for us as a community to really understand our power and really hone in on that as much as possible. And 
what I'm doing personally is um, partnering with my girls over there, to Lisa and Brittany, um, <laughs> who are also two really successful entrepreneurs. And what we're trying to do is really um, take care of this next generation of Latina entrepreneurs and really create a space that's our own um, and really just give back. I think we've seen how powerful skill sharing is and just being able to partner with someone and teach them a little bit about what you know goes a really long way. So please look out for Let's Head Less Crew and all of our events. Um, yeah, we put on a party. Um, so yeah, I think what I would really love for you to get from what I just talked about is how like the first idea that you have is never what it's actually going to end up to be. You know, I think you really have to let yourself, let your vision change. Me as a mother went through so many revisions, it's gone through so many changes, and it's constantly evolving. Um, and it's become something that was bigger than just like my little side hustle. And I think that goes with any project that you start, you know, like that initial seed that was planted is never what's going to be the final product. So I hope you liked me talking. Thank you so much for listening.